Hello, everyone, and thank you for the opportunity to speak at this conference. I want to share a few results uh, from our study on understanding interannual variability at the Venus cloud tops from last year. Uh, Venus cloud tops have been observed on and off now since the 70s uh, by spacecraft, by space based telescopes, and ground based telescopes. And we see that sulfur dioxide abundance um, at the cloud tops varies by orders of magnitude on all kinds of timescales, daily, monthly, yearly, and decadal. The, the latter two, the yearly and decadal long-term variability is particularly interesting because at this altitude in the atmosphere, both chemical and radiative timescales are very fast. One, one reason uh, why we would see long-term variability at this altitude is because the dominant uh, sources of sulfur dioxide are in the deep atmosphere. And the deep atmosphere, because of its large mass and energy content, has very slow timescales. Uh, the transport uh, of sulfur dioxide from the deep atmosphere to the cloud tops takes place through vertical mixing in the clouds. And so two main uh, theories exist as to why there is long-term variability at the cloud tops. One of them is that there are periodic uh, volcanic emissions uh, at the surface. The other explanation is that there might be periodic or quasi-periodic changes in the vertical mixing in the atmosphere, which then changes how much uh, sulfur dioxide is transported. And that causes the spikes. So the second explanation seems to become more and more possible as time goes on, though we still don't have a full mechanism for how the vertical mixing in the clouds should change with time. And so this is the problem we are tackling. In the recent few years, there have been many studies uh, examining both uh, chemical transport and radiative transfer in the atmosphere. And two of these uh, stood out to us. The first one is a study by Lee et al. in 2016, who looked at the radiative effects of trace gases uh, in the deep atmosphere of Venus on the atmospheric temperature structure. And one of the things they found is that water is a very important control on how much heating there is at the cloud base. So the more water you have, the less, uh, less heating you have. The second interesting uh, or very relevant study to us is from is the chemical modeling study by Krasnopolsky in 2015. Uh, who looked at this coupled system of water, sulfur dioxide, and sulfuric acid within the clouds. And they basically examined the effects of changes in vertical mixing through the eddy diffusivity on how the abundances of water and sulfur dioxide vary at different vertical levels. And so these two studies have have links to each other because the cloud-based water abundance influences the strength of the cloud level convective strength and vice versa. And so this is the coupled system that could be causing this variability. And we want to try to understand how the system works. Unfortunately, this is a very short talk, so I cannot go into all the details. But if you write out the equations for uh, radiative cooling of the atmosphere in the IR, and then the dependence of the water abundance on the strength of vertical mixing or the eddy diffusivity, uh, the equations look something like this in their reduced forms. So it forms, there's two differential equations here. The first one is for the time rate of change of the water abundance. And the second one is the height of the convective clouds, which is a proxy for the strength of the con convection. And what you see is that these two equations uh, basically show an oscillator. And there are two parameters for this coupled set, uh, A and B. A is the chemical mixing time scale, and B is the radiative relaxation time scale. And at the cloud base, uh, these two time scales are of the order of a few months. And the time period of this oscillation 
comes from something like the geometric mean of these two time scales. Uh, and it turns out to be a few years, which is what we also observe at the cloud tops. So this is what the equations look like when you plot them out. Um, and the takeaway from this figure is that for small perturbations, the oscillations are simple harmonic, uh, but for strong perturbations, there's deviation from the simple harmonic behavior and uh, it becomes something like a recharge discharge system. And as you can see, the time period of oscillations uh, here using A and B with the time period of about 120 days, which is about three months, uh, sorry, four months, uh, gives you an oscillation of about a three year time period. And you can play with these numbers and you can have oscillations up to a decade long. Uh, so this is the prediction from the theory and it needs to be, of course, falsifiable and checkable. So the major falsifiable prediction from this theory is that the maxima or minima in cloud-based water abundance must always lag the corresponding maxima or minima in convective cloud layer height. If the phase relationship does not hold, then this theory is not true and there's some other mechanism at work. Uh, the water abundance at the cloud base can be measured by IR bands around the 2.3 micron region and the convective layer height can be measured by radio observations. Uh, but unfortunately, so far, there are no long-term data sets that we can study to, to see if this relationship holds or not. Uh, and the hope is that future missions such as Istra's Shukrayan uh, could make these measurements and uh, see if such a mechanism is indeed at work in the atmosphere of Venus. Um, thank you.